Hello everyone and we <laughs> welcome to the second game we'll be showing from round 3 of this year's Norway Chess. It is Fabiano Corona versus Ari Antari. The first game that we've shown was Magnus versus Hikaru, uh, that beautiful King's Gambit um, that was an Armageddon game. If you haven't seen it, do check it out. It's my previous video, uh, Hikaru versus Magnus in the King's Gambit. That is simply a must-see. Uh, but this one, uh, it's uh, not easy for Tarius. He lost his previous two matches. Uh, Fabi, he won his previous two matches. Of course, Fabi would like to continue winning because one of his victories is against Magnus Carlsen in classical time format. So if he does, if he does really well, he's uh, on, uh, definitely on a, a collision course with a, uh, with a victory uh, in the tournament. Uh, and uh, Tari would definitely like a, a, at least to, um, draw the classical if, if not win it uh, and then to, um, uh, grabs a, a couple of more points. So let's see what he can do against the former World Chess Championship challenger. Uh, Fabi has the white pieces and he opens with d4. And I am not exaggerating uh, with the title. This truly is like a surgeon. So knight to f6, we have pawn to c4, pawn to e6, and knight to f3. We have d5 transposing into the queen's gambit declined, c captures on d5, e captures, and knight to c3. So the exchange variation, nothing new here, pawn to c6, and now bishop to g5, still the most common move here. We have queen to c2, uh, g6, and now bishop to g5. We have bishop to e7, not allowing the, the, the pin to exist. We have e3, and now bishop to f5, nicely developing both of the bishops. Bishop Stari doesn't want to uh, get, get his bishop um, uh, locked in or, or go for some sort of a b6 bishop to b7 c5 maneuver. So bishop to f5 as it comes with an attack on the queen, bishop to d3, and he just trades off the light square bishops, captures, captures, and he castles to safety. Uh, Fabi uh, could also castle to safety, but he has a very different idea of how he wants to um, uh, steer this game. Bishop captures on f6, uh, bishop captures, and now, okay, he gave up his dark square bishop, but uh, he removed the defender of the h5 square, and he plays pawn to h4. He just goes for the black king. He wants to play h5, open up the uh, black king's position, and go for some sort of a checkmating attack if possible, which means that uh, he might even be considering a queenside castles. Uh, so here, uh, uh, and interestingly, h4 is not that often played here. The usual idea is pawn to b4. But okay, Fabi goes for pawn to h4. Knight to a6, incredibly rare move, but the queen is on d3, so you might even be considering knight to b4. Uh, and here, queenside castles was played. Uh, it was uh, played some uh, 13 years ago, uh, but uh, here we have pawn to h5 by Fabi, and it is now as of move 13 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, pawn to c5, uh, it's a very, uh, uh, you know, definitely a principled idea. Uh, you you uh, reply to the attack on the flank by attacking your opponent in the center. You want to open up the white king's position and just attack him as he, he is still on e1. And here you would expect something like castle's queen side, but nope, Fabi just goes, sorry, Fabi just goes rook to d1. One. He keeps the king on e1, which means that he's uh, probably considering something like king to f1, maybe even king to g1. Uh, all depends on what uh, uh, Tari plays. And now uh, you could play c captures on d4, but after knight captures, you're never opening up the center, and the white king is perfectly safe on e1. So instead, knight to b4 goes after the queen, queen back to e2, and now rook to e8. Nicely aligning the rook with the king and queen, but just king to f1, and the king will be very safe there. And uh, you might even think, but what about c4? Can't we just bring the knight to d3? Uh, actually, no. Just knight to e1 uh, guards the d3 square, and next you will kick away the knight with a3, and then just bring the knight back. So nothing really happening there. So instead, rook to c8 by Tari, uh, and now h captures on g6. Fabi just opens up the black king, uh, h captures, and pawn to g3 now. Here, Fabi is saying that he's interested in moving the king to g2, and then maybe even doubling up rooks on the h file. We have king to g7. Now the rook can also enter the h file king to g2 and now c captures on d4 we have knight captures on d4 uh, and now you don't have to worry about bishop captures. The rook is also covering that. Uh, knight to c6. Uh, here, uh, of course, Tari is saying my knight on b4 is just being weird. It's doing nothing. And your knight on d4 is truly a, a spectacular piece. You know, a mighty steed controlling all of these uh, wonderful squares. So just knight to c6. Tari wants to trade his bad knight for Fabi's great knight. 
queen to f3 and now rook to e5. Now, uh, knight captures on d4 is the move that you kind of should play. Point is that after captures and captures, it seems like there's no good way to defend the d5 pawn, but you can defend it with active play, something like rook to c6, and if knight captures, then just rook to d6, and everything is perfectly fine. Knight to e3, for example, you will capture on d4, uh, white would capture on b7, you will play rook to e7, and you have sufficient activity for that one pawn that you have um, uh, given up. So, okay, that's one way to do it. Uh, in the game, rook to e5 was played by Aryan, and now knight d to e2. Uh, we have rook to f5, going after Fabi's queen on f3, just knight to f4. And now, uh, how do you continue? g5, although it looks nice, doesn't really do anything because, uh, okay, the knight cannot move, but you can play rook captures on d5. The rook on f5 is hanging, so it's, you know, just rook captures. Now knight to h5 check, you also go after the bishop, so nothing uh, fun happening here. Knight captures on f6, uh, this is being threatened like this, like this, like this. Rook to h8 being threatened, you're going to lose the queen, so this would be resigns for Tari. So instead, after knight to f4, bishop captures on c3, he eliminates one of the attackers of the d5 pawn, b captures, and now queen to g5. So uh, getting those uh, heavy pieces in front of uh, Fabi's uh, king, uh, but doesn't matter, just queen to e2, preparing to go after that um, d5 pawn, uh, queen to e7, and now we have knight captures on d5. Why did Tari play queen to e7? Why did he allow knight captures on d5? Uh, the queen uh, and rook from g5 uh, were nice guarding that d5 pawn well he either calculated well or he miscalculated let's see what happens knight captures on d5 we have queen to e6 now preparing to win material here and the point is if you go back which is kind of the idea then queen to e4 check and you will now ruin white's uh, pawn structure because white has to play f3 if you try to block this it's not really going to work if you move the king to g1 then knight to e5 comes then knight to f3 check and this is not fun so instead, pawn to e4 by Fabi, uh, and now just rook to e8. Uh, so of course, the rook cannot be captured, the queen on e2 is hanging, so just rook h to e1, and now we have queen back to c8. Now, again, you cannot capture because rook captures on e2 would happen, uh, but queen to c8, uh, uh, having that in mind, uh, completely blunders the game for Aryan. Uh, feel free to pause the video and win the game for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, never listening to what I say, as I say the weirdest of things. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, E captures an F5. Fabi captures the rook, he sacrifices the queen, and uh, uh, of course, this is the first move you thought of, but the, the, the truth of the position lies in the very next move. So this is the one you had to see. So rook captures an E2, of course, you have to capture the queen, there's nothing better, and now comes the, uh, the, the real idea, and that is pawn to f6 with check and now there's really nothing for uh, uh, Aryan to do here the problem is whatever you do uh, there's just no continuing this game it uh, doesn't really matter where you move your king uh, whatever you play king to f8 was played rook captures on e2 now he has two rooks for the queen uh, without um, Aryan having any counterplay uh, queen to f5 was played kind of putting pressure on the knight here and on the f6 pawn but just pawn to c4 in, in absolute cold blood this is uh, I mean you, you really feel bl uh, bad playing this with the black pieces now the pawn is nicely defending the knight the knight is defending the pawn here and it's it's merely a matter of rook e1 and the rook to e8 checkmate there, there's no actual way for black to stop this so of course uh, he will try knight to e5 going for this one last idea uh, but it doesn't matter fabi will allow this as a courtesy rook d to e1 was played queen to f3 check king to g1 and he was in this position on move 34 that ariantari resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here there's no move. rook capture on e5 is coming next if you move the knight uh, rook to eight checkmate is coming so this is resigns once the knight um, leaves the board it's going to be a knight and two rooks for the queen and of course that is completely unplayable and the knight is there to stay the f6 pawn is there to stay so the black king will also get checkmated it's not uh, i mean it's not even it's not even close uh, to, to, to something that you would maybe try to play uh, so yeah, that's why I, I said like a surgeon, Fabi uh, surgically, you know, uh, executes uh, executes this uh, entire game. Uh, absolutely unbelievable. Tari played the brilliant chess. Uh, pretty much every move was an engine move by both of them. But then at some point, uh, Tari made a couple of suboptimal moves and Fabi just punished that, um, uh, uh, you know, t t t uh, in the ma maximum possible way.
Uh, so yeah, uh, really incredible stuff. For those of you who do not wish your experience to be ruined and would not like to know what happened in the other games, you should end the video now because I will now discuss what happened in the other games, even though I might cover uh, a few more. So let's check out what happened. Uh, okay, so first let's check out what happened um, in the other games. Of course, we've seen uh, Gukesh has defeated Shahrir Mamedyarov. They went into uh, Armageddon. Uh, Nodirbek lost to Alireza Firuja. Alireza defeated Nodirbek in the classical time section. I'm hoping to cover this game next. Fabiano defeated Tari, we've seen in the classical section. Uh, uh, Wesley So lost to Anishgiri, uh, also in Armageddon. And Magnus Carlsen has defeated Hikaru Nakamura, also in Armageddon. If you haven't seen it, check out my previous video. King's Gambit between Magnus and Hikaru. Uh, doesn't get any better better than that. So that's the that's the stuff, and this is the uh, standings after round three. Fabi leading the tournament with seven and a half points, as one should when he def when defeating Magnus Carlsen in classical time format. Uh, second place Alireza with six points, with five um, Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, Gukesh with four and a half, uh, Anish Giri and Nodirbek Abdusatro with uh, four, uh, Wesley So with three and a half, Magnus Carlsen in eighth place with three points, Mamedyarov uh, in ninth place with two and a half points, and Aryan Tari in last place uh, with uh, uh, only one point. So there we have it. We're gonna, uh, I believe uh, I'm going to check out the, the game between Alireza and Nodirbek next, and then we're gonna discuss, you know, uh, some other things like the, the, the shift in power in the, in the world top, top 20 in the live ratings, and maybe some other fun stuff. Maybe we check out some photos who knows uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it fabi you know when he does it well he truly is like a surgeon uh, i would like to thank uh, buntiak pyang uh, ravishing reptiles youtube michael sakarias david gasparin and brandon fukuda for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of this spectacular event uh, until it finishes uh, so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day